I was thinking about this idea that maybe it'd be a, a good plan to put a video in my little how-to playlist on how to land a plane. As many of you probably know, I'm a licensed pilot. I got my I got my license when I was a very young man, and uh, I, I haven't flown in quite a while, but nevertheless, I'm, I am licensed. I've gone through the training, and it occurs to me that during the training, there was a lot of time spent on landing, and the reason is because every other activity in flying is optional. Landing, that's required. That's carried through for me into, into radio control flying as well. I, I spend a lot of time landing just to make sure that uh, I can get the plane on the ground in a myriad of conditions and because I also happen to be a flight instructor for the squadron I think it's a good idea for me to be able to get a get into a situation and take over a plane and get it on the ground If somebody that's new to flying is having problems. So that said my plan is to dissect the elements of landing pattern and Talk through why they're there and and how you can practice if you're new to flying on developing proper landing techniques <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna take off left to right. You can tell by the windsock, I got a, I got a wind running straight down the runway here. So I'm just gonna take off left to right and I'm gonna get in the pattern. Now, the pattern, you have to envision the pattern being this uh, rectangle with one leg being parallel to the runway. And then another leg, this one, also being parallel to the runway, but down the runway center line. So this is called upwind, and this one, this other parallel leg is called downwind. Now there's two other turns in the pattern that you need to be aware of, or legs. One is called base, that's this one, where you're flying 90 degrees to the center line. And then this one is called final, which is the approach to the runway down the center line. Okay, so let's start with downwind. Downwind, the idea in downwind is to enter the pattern and, and get yourself set up for a landing, all right? Uh, downwind is also a very good time in an RC field to tell the other guys, other flyers, hey, I'm landing. I'm gonna land left to right. So I use downwind for that purpose. I stop doing what I'm doing, you know, the rolls or the loops or the patterns or whatever it is, and I enter the pattern on the downwind. And that gets me, that gets me established in preparation for landing. And downwind is also the leg where you start to slow the plane down. You're out there flying and doing all these crazy maneuvers and loops and everything. Well, when you get in downwind, it's time to slow the plane down and start bleeding off airspeed because you want to land at a slow speed. All right, so here I am entering the downwind leg. Hey, I'm landing. And I also kind of a set up an altitude based on the airplane, and it depends a little bit on each plane. Smaller planes, I'm a little lower. Bigger planes, I'm a little higher. But the idea on downwind is to establish an altitude so that your perspective on the runway becomes consistent. All right, so that's downwind. Now I'm gonna show you a base leg, and I'll talk a little bit about the proper base leg and about my modified base leg. Okay, so here's downwind, now I'm gonna turn base. Now base, you want that to be, that's another leg where things are happening. The big, the big thing on base is to fly toward the center line and to continue losing altitude. So, or actually to start losing altitude. Downwind, in a real pattern, you're supposed to maintain about 800 feet on a small plane. Uh, real, I'm talking about a real plane. Uh, but base is where you really start your descent. And I'll try and show you that with this pattern. So here I am level and downwind. I'm gonna turn base and I'm gonna start descending. And then on final, when you turn final, same thing, you continue that descent down to the threshold. That was a little ugly. Let's do that again. Okay, so downwind, I'm starting to slow the plane down. Now I'm ready to turn base. I'm gonna make a 90 degree turn and I'm gonna start losing altitude. And then on final, we do the same thing, another 90 degree turn and we continue losing altitude as we fly toward the runway. Okay, now the proper way to fly base and final is to make clean 90 degree turns. So I'll show you, here's a 90 degree turn, right? Clean, very discreet, 90 degree turn, lose altitude. Now final, another 90 degree turn, continue to lose altitude, and it's a straight line. That's the proper way to do it. If you have a flight instructor, 
and the flight instructor wants to see a proper pattern, that's a proper pattern. So each leg is a discrete straight line with a preceded by a 90 degree turn. On my patterns, the way I fly them is I do more of a racetrack. So I start my turn, I continue the descent, and I never really take that turn out. I just do this kind of like a, like a racetrack pattern. Uh, it's, I find it easier. Uh, I, and I know, I know I've seen like videos and footage or high, of higher performance planes that fly that same kind of pattern. But when you're first learning to fly, they wanna see a 90 degree turn, a straight line, and then another 90 degree turn and a straight line. That, that's the proper way to do it. I stick with the racetrack because for me, it's easier. I just feel more, it feels more natural to me to start the turn and to continue that turn while I'm losing altitude. I don't, I haven't found a good reason, a practical reason to take my turn out. So I just kind of start that turn and I dive as I, as I turn. And now I'm set up on a real nice final, right down the center line of the runway. And there we go. All right, so those are the mechanics of landing. That's the pattern. Now I wanna show you a couple things that I do to kind of help smooth out landing. Okay, so for landing, let's talk a little bit about the elevator and power. Because the elevator and power have everything to do with how you're going to touch down. It's real easy to think about the, the throttle being the thing that's managing your speed. Because when you're flying straight and level, when I add power, the plane goes faster. When I take power off, the plane goes slower. When you're flying straight and level, the elevator is responsible for your altitude. It changes, if I wanna go up in the air, I pull back on that throttle stick, or the elevator stick, and I go up in the air. If I push down on the elevator stick, I go down. So the dynamics change a little bit though when you're flying slow and you're coming in for a landing in that the elevator, you're not really using that to control your altitude. You're using it to control your speed. So the more elevator you add, the slower the plane goes. It doesn't really control your descent rate. It controls your speed. So I had a lot of up elevator on that landing and that's why the plane touched down very gently because I was near stall speed. Now, regarding rate of descent, that is managed with your power. So it's kind of a weird thing to get used to. It takes some time getting used to that idea. But here, I'm gonna do a full off power approach and I'm gonna fly it closer to the camera so you can get a better idea. But that descent rate right now is not, is, is not being controlled by my elevator. My elevator is just slowing me down. The descent rate remains the descent rate. If I wanna arrest my descent rate or slow my descent rate down, I add power. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. I'm gonna come around to land, I'm gonna establish a glide slope, and I'm gonna add power at the end to show you how I can arrest my descent rate. Okay, I'm straight and level, the plane's ascending, now I'm adding power. Okay, you see that? I arrested my descent rate. Now you can use that information on landing. The idea is to use a slight amount of power if you need to slow your descent rate down a little bit. You don't wanna bump it all the way up unless you're in trouble. But use just, just bump the throttle a little bit if you're not where you wanna be and you can use that to kind of target your landing. All right, so the, the key here is that your elevator controls your speed when you're on final and landing. Your power level controls your rate of descent. That's the lesson. So when you work on your landings, practice that. Just get your elevator, keep the plane flat, and then use your power to arrest your descent rate. See that? I just barely bumped the power and the wheels kissed the runway and took off. That was just bumping the power just a little bit. Okay, so my elevator, I'm using it to control my speed. I wanna slow down, so I'm adding, 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 adding. My rate of descent is okay. Got a little fast at the end, so I just kissed it just a little bit, just a little bump. too fast descending I want to be down the runway a little more so just a touch of power 
Well guys, if you find this video information useful, I definitely appreciate your subscription and uh, hit that notification bell so, so that uh, when I post new material, you're told about it. And um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you find some use in it and hopefully it'll help you, especially if you're newer, uh, I hope it'll help you improve the landings of your plane. Um, remember what I said at the beginning, every aspect of flying is optional except landing. Anyway, hope that helps guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Take it easy.